What's happening everybody? Welcome back to another episode of My Pathetic Life as a Homeowner. Actually, this is actually a pretty good episode because I've actually had a chance to do something progressive for once rather than 90% of the time I'm doing maintenance around the house and fixing shit and keeping shit running. Finally, a progressive project and this is what it is. I call this my hybrid fire pit slash fireplace. Uh, I was planning on putting a fireplace in and then I started looking at the cost and it got a little crazy. Uh, kind of ordering a pre-built kit and having it installed was around five grand mark. Um, so I decided to also, I didn't want to block all my beautiful view over there. Uh, I decided to kind of create a hybrid. Uh, so I call this my hybrid fire pit slash fireplace. If you notice the bottom part, it actually looks like a generic fire pit which I kind of thought about leaving for a second, fought with my wife over, but then I said, you know what, screw it. Let's build this thing up, see where we go with it. And this is the end result. So this video is my step-by-step -step of me building this thing. I literally built this thing freestyle. I couldn't find anything on the internet. Um, so let's take a look at what it took to get this thing from start to finish. And at the end of the video, I'll go over the cost of how much this actually cost me. So, and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. So anyways, if you like what you see here, watch the video and let's go from there, cheers. Alrighty, first things first. I think I've created my block, my starting point. And uh, this square is gonna be three feet by three feet. First thing I do, I gotta get rid of the inside blocks, so I drew uh, an outline around this thing and I'm gonna use that saw and let's start cutting these blocks out of here. It gives us a nice base to start with. Uh, the patio does slope this way, so I'm gonna do a little bit of digging to kind of get this thing uh, level because uh, this thing's gonna go up higher. I don't even know how high this is gonna go. I'm totally freestyling this, by the way. There's no plans on the internet for this particular thing that I am envisioning. Literally, I'm just gonna take these blocks, put them in here, and see if I can make some sort of cool cathedral style fire pit hybrid fireplace. That is the plan. Let's get at it. All right, pavers are out. Now, before I'm gonna level this out a little bit, I'm actually gonna create a little drainage point with gravel here, and I'm gonna run some gravel under these things. Reason why is it rained, and this thing completely filled up with water. And I've done this before with, uh, with another, one of my previous fire pits, and it was a constant issue. If you don't do something about the drainage, it'll fill up with water. I mean, it goes down slowly and over time, but it's a bit of an annoyance. So in this case, I'm gonna put a little bit of a great drainage, a little drain out, and hopefully the water doesn't build up in it. So let's get that going. All right, got a little bit of a trench knocked out and it goes to soil here. I'm gonna leave this, I can cut it out later, but I think it's fine. I'm gonna put some uh, gravel in here. I actually got river walk, but gravel, put the stones back in, and let's get back to leveling this thing out. Gravel's in, gonna put a small layer of, um, fill over top and then put these things back. Everything's pretty level now. Um, if you notice the gap right here, I don't know, it's like two and a qu three quarters or something or two and a quarter. Uh, and then you notice it up here, it's not as, uh, as thick, right? So I essentially put some uh, dirt, or not dirt, sorry, base up on this side and I'm tapering it this way and it gives me pretty much a level, as level as I wanna be. I don't know if you noticed the bubble, it's pretty much dead centered. And then I'm gonna use some uh, leveling sand to fill in the gaps, like I got a bit of a gap here, but, and a little bit of a gap there. So I'm gonna use the leveling sand to uh, fill in some of the gaps as I'm putting the pavers down, and I'm gonna be uh, leveling them. The most important layer is always gonna be your first layer of pavers. You wanna make sure you get that as level as possible, everything as straight as possible. And just to give you an idea, um, the outside dimensions of this thing because of my stones are 52 and a quarter inches 
um, or 1,327 ish millimeters. Um, so the inside is going to be three feet by three feet, but the outside is that. So, in case you're wondering, that's what the outside is. So, let's have at it with the first layer of stones. All right, all right. First layer is in. I do have to make a few cuts right here, right here, right here. And right there and then we have a nice perfect square I went super anal not just regular anal but super anal on leveling this out so this is really level now uh, you can see that side over there is lower than this side it's all leveled out um, and yeah first layer is the most important layer because you want to make sure everything is as flush as can be and as level as can be because everything after that it starts to compound and be cre create issues right so i mean realistically we're not creating a fucking rocket ship so it doesn't need to be down to like fucking one one thousandth of an inch but you want to try to be as super anal as possible um and uh once your first layer is in everything after that starts to get a lot better and let's uh it's it's getting late in the day so i'm fucking calling it quits Quits means I'm gonna have another fucking beer. And uh, let's get at it for day two. I'm gonna cut those off, start the second layer, and go from there. Cheers. Alrighty, on to layer two. And uh, this layer, I'm gonna start putting some construction adhesive onto it. Uh, I am using Loctite PL three times premium. There's an eight times premium, which is eight times stronger. This one's three times, it's a little bit cheaper. I've been using this stuff for a very, very long time and I love it. Uh, compared to liquid nails, this stuff is like a hundred times better. So this next layer, I'm gonna be cut, putting this adhesive down. Arguably the heat from the fire may not do so well with this eventually, but in the meantime, and if you try to stay close to the outside edge, uh, it will do a good job. So let's get going on that. On to row three. Beer break. Cheers. All right, third layer is in. Now I'm gonna do a fourth layer. However, I'm gonna use, do it as a cap. What I mean by cap is instead of going like this, I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna cap it off all the way around. Now. I'm on the fourth layer doing the cap. I was debating on doing it on the third layer. I'm kind of hit and miss whether I should have or not, but I decided to go a third layer and create a fourth layer, which makes this extremely deep, but that's all right. So what I'm gonna end up doing is putting gravel into this. And what that's gonna do is raise the fire up. So when you're sitting down, you're gonna be looking like directly through the fire. So it might work out, let's, uh, let's play with it. But anyways, before I'm gonna go onto this, uh, cap layer I'm gonna smooth out a few little areas here this is a raised one there's a few areas that are kind of raised so I'm gonna try to grind them down see you can see it rocking on that area so I'm gonna try to grind that down a bit try to grind down a few other areas and uh, just uh, try to get it as flat as possible because my plan is not to end it with this cap my plan is to go higher and create an actual overhead quote-unquote roof slash chimney for this fire pit hybrid fireplace so that's the end goal but you can realistically stop here and you have a nice pretty nice clean fire pit to be honest with you or stop after the cap and you you know it's a traditional fire pit right so but let's fucking get it going here let's try to grind some of this out so I just got a little angle grinder here Much better. So I'm gonna do with all that, a little bit more around the edges here, and uh, start capping away. Alrighty, next life decision, big decision here. Um, how much overhang to put? So I got like about a, I think this is kind of where I wanna be as far as overhang goes for the cap. And I got it down to two and a half inches overhang. So I'm gonna do two and a half inches overhang all the way around. Let's get started. So a bit of a, 
pro tip, or not pro tip, but an aesthetic tip on this is when you're doing your cap, go from each side. So work from both sides in, and then what's gonna happen is more than likely you're gonna have to end up doing a cut in the middle. Uh, and at least that cut will be kind of dead center versus having it on one side. Aesthetically, it just looks a lot better. So that's what I'm doing right now, going from one side to the other and working my way in. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a tiny cut there. It's gonna look a little wonky, but maybe I'm gonna bring it in here. Let's see what I can do with as far as the edging goes or the edges go. So if I put this in the middle, uh, you know what, it's so close that I'm gonna dumb down my, I'm gonna put this dead center right now. And then I'm gonna push this side in. I'm gonna push this side in. It's just sliding on the glue. And let me see what that edge is. So I'm gonna backtrack my first statement a little bit. So we're gonna do two and uh, two and an eighth, or sorry, yeah, two and an eighth on this side. This side we got one. Did I measure this wrong? What am I doing here? I'm gonna move this over. If that's two and an eighth. What is that now? About one and three quarters. Roughly one and three quarters. Shift it back a little. So one and three quarters. One and three quarters. And then this, I'm gonna shift all these back. So I'm gonna shift all these back to one and three quarters. And that's gonna be my kind of cap all right cap layer is on and this is what I would consider a normal people fire pit do I look normal to you I hope so but you know what I'm gonna get super creative with this and I'm totally freestyling this again but I'm gonna keep going with this we're gonna put, try to put some pillars, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And the whole end game is to put a chimney on top of this. So this is a, literally gonna be a fire pit slash fireplace hybrid. Um, I scoured the internet and uh, I wasn't able to find anything like this. Um, so this is maybe an original but worst case scenario, if my little chimney idea does not work, I could always kind of revert back to this and just be a traditional fire pit like normal people have. Let's keep going. All right, here's where I'm at with this. This is what it looks like right now. This is a mock-up. I'm not actually, haven't like glued these in yet or leveled them, but this is kind of, this is kind of my struggle right now. The whole point of this video was to make a, a hybrid fire pit slash fireplace and that's the whole point is every side is going to be open uh, versus a normal fireplace where one side's open but I'm looking at this right now and I'm kind of struggling whether I should keep going or not uh, my wife she's not really feeling it but she pretty much said do whatever the fuck you want to do I have a few friends that aren't feeling it either and uh, I'm not gonna lie, as it sits right now, I don't like it. I feel like it's obstructing potential views of fireplace or fire, the fire itself, right? So I had to make a call and that call is gonna be, fuck it, let's do it. Sometimes you just gotta throw money even though nobody else has done it before, that's it. Let's fucking make something happen here. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, I could always revert it back to a fire pit. But it'll be a bitch if I need to. Ah, struggles, struggles. Take chances. Fuck it. Let's do it. Cheers. The video. I've had to make a few cuts. 
um, and it's hard to see here maybe with the camera, but uh, every layer had like a half, not a half, like a three quarter brick that needed it. And what that means is I ended up with a bunch of these little cuts here, right? So as you can see here, all of these were kind of cut uh, to one third, sorry, one third of the uh, actual brick. So I'm gonna be using these to make my wall and how I'm gonna use this is like this. I got my main brick here and I'm gonna line it up with this uh, and then I'm gonna put this in. So hold on a sec here. So we're gonna be like this, lined up with this and this. And this is gonna be the column that I'm gonna be building. Um, note to self, not to self, note to you. You wanna beat some of these cuts down like this, just to kind of make it look a little bit more normal like the other edges, right? So beat some of these uh, ends off. All you need to do is the sides realistically. You don't need to do the top. And then it kind of looks a little bit more natural when you put it in. So here's where I'm at. This is gonna be the starting point for the column. Now, I'm gonna be super anal. With this, with this stone, it's not bad. I got flat here. I know I got a little bit of a, a little bit of a uphill there. So I'm gonna grind that out. And I'm gonna try to grind out whatever I need to grind out to make sure these things are completely uh, flat to this stone and then obviously level so we got the stone pillars going all the way up So that's what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna have a fucking beer right now and uh, Let's get at it Alrighty. Pillars are all in all four of them stacked one two three four five six seven blocks high. I was arguing over six but I felt like seventh would have been uh, just right visually. So my gap here is 24 inches and here it works out to 28 inches. Now, hardest part of this whole situation, I need to create a row that goes all the way around. Uh, trying to stack these into a pyramid structure without having any support here is pretty much, not impossible, but I'm sure as well not fucking with it. So. So here's what I'm gonna do. I ordered some angle iron. And I'm gonna put, this is three inch by three inch by roughly a quarter. And I'm gonna put the angle iron here, like this. And then I ordered this one inch stuff too. One inch by a quarter. And I was originally gonna put it like this flat, but I'm not feeling that bounce. So I think I'm gonna put it this way and I'm gonna carve it into the stone. I'm also gonna carve this into the stone so it's flush too. And then that way, that'll give me the ability to go like this and work my way around this entire thing. So this layer, this next layer here is gonna mimic this bottom layer here. So this layer sticks out from here about an inch and three quarters. So this one's gonna stick out about an inch and three quarters as well. And then the next layer on top of that is gonna mimic this layer. So it's gonna overhang to here. So it's gonna be pretty wild looking, but uh, it should all balance out. So let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna grind this all in. All right, I got my line here. And I'm just gonna shave into the stone about a quarter inch, just so that three by three iron stays uh, flush. I'm just gonna use this little angle grinder for my little diamond bit. Grind it down, grind it down. That was actually way quicker than I expected it to take. It went pretty quick. But then I placed the, place it inside and we are pretty damn flush there. Really damn flush there. Now, next thing, 
I'm gonna grind out a channel so I can place this and drop it into it and this will get me a lot of support so right here I gotta do a channel and right here I gotta do a channel so let's do that right now all right this thing's in like that I actually uh, had to bring out the big guns because that little fucker couldn't handle it this channel was a little bit more of a pain in the ass but it's pretty much doing what it's supposed to be doing and now I can comfortably lay bricks on the center and they'll hold solid solid so that's the overhang and there's gonna be another brick on here so there's gonna be a little bit of overhang but it'll eventually everything's gonna be riding on this thing and uh, it'll look good let me finish up all these and then uh, we we'll slap on the layer of bricks and we have our front completely covered let's do it cheers Ready? all the iron is in its place it's kind of nice and flush all the way around I did have a bit of a casualty of a war here but uh, I'm gonna glue that in and you won't even notice it after this is all set and done so this is where I'm at I'm actually gonna be adhering this I'm actually going to take the stones and adhere them to this and I get it. I, don't get me wrong. I get it. This stuff is not rated to be in a fire pit. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know if there's anything out there that would be rated to be in a fire pit for adhesive. Um, if there is, you know what, show it, uh, show it in the description below or give me a comment as to what it, what I should have been using for this. But anyways, I've been using this stuff for years on various projects and I, I just like it. I just like it a lot. And uh, realistically, if I put it here on the edge, chances are the heat's never gonna break it down anyway. So it will help in some cases. Um, throwing it on here, which I'm gonna do, uh, I know it's, it's gonna break down, but that's not the point. The reason why I'm doing that is, is because as I'm building this up, I just don't want any stones to kind of fall off and, you know, potentially, you know, smash my toe, which look at my steel toe shoes here, ain't gonna fucking help me. So, so the reason why I put it on is just as I build this, just to kind of help me uh, make sure that everything's kind of set in place. So that's the only reason I'm using it. Um, I could be stacking from this point because uh, I have a pretty strategic plan as to how this is gonna kind of go up like this. But um, so stacking will probably work, but at the same time I am using this stuff. And again, just to kind of help me make sure that nothing falls as I'm building. And that's really the only purpose of it at this point. So let's get started on this next layer. And uh, I did clean this off with some soapy water. So cross my fingers, this kind of helps adhere to it. But again, doesn't matter. Let's go. Get some nice bricks for this. So again, I'm mimicking this, right? This layer right here. And then I'm gonna mimic this layer and it's just about to fucking start to rain, which is gonna throw me off here. So let's get going on this. So right here, and what I'm trying to get at is one and three quarters, one and three quarters. I gotta slide this back. And this, by the way, this, uh, this uh, angle iron's loose. I'm not gluing this down, there's no point. So I can mess with it. And it's fine. All right, next one. Let's get a nice clean one here because this is the face. There we go. Let's get another clean one from this pile. See, this is, it's coming on here. Dude, this is solid. That, that little angle or this, this little flat piece being that way makes this so solid. I see there's a bit of a, see the problem with these bricks is sometimes you get like, nice and flush and then you get a brick that's a little bit higher this one's a little bit higher I might have to grind that down a little bit but uh, that's not what I'm gonna do right now then I need a cut which I already pre-cut so my cuts gonna go right here just like that and then I'm going that way I'm gonna start this brick start this journey that way but chances are I'm gonna have to bail because it's starting to fucking rain Funk and rain. So we go like this. I'm gonna put one more in really quickly before it starts getting wet. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. I had to do this right at the wrong fucking time. I've been sitting around all morning too. So I'm gonna get this, make sure this is all inch and a quarter, I'm way off. 
So I'm gonna punch it back. There we go, we're at an inch and a quarter roughly. Uh, not really inch and a quarter here. Closer to two inches. Closer to two inches, it is what it is. It doesn't matter, we're not building a fucking rocket ship, we're building a goddamn fire pit, right? And this I can punch back, like this. This is pretty good. We okay, we okay, we good, we good. All right, the lair is in. I'm just kind of walking around right now. Everything's still fresh. Adhesive hasn't really hit yet. I'm just kind of bumping things around a little and checking all the corners to see, make sure I'm kind of close to equal, right? So I'm trying to be between one and a quarter and two inches. This one's at like one and a half. So I'm gonna try to bump that that way a little. So we're getting close to one and a quarter on this side and we're like one and a quarter on this side so that's equal this side's kind of two-ish this side's one and a half so bump it this way a little all right the lair is in uh it's pretty solid now it's glued in um i did go around and do some uh, grinding of some ups and down and high spots the reality of working with stone in general is you literally can't I mean, you can do as much as you can to try to stay level, but there's always going to be some ups and downs. So I tried to kind of compensate some of those by taking them out. I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And uh, I'm going to try to work these little areas of ups and downs out, but this is kind of what I'm left with. So reality is I'm pretty damn level from the ground up, right? But as you can see here, we got a bit of a, not even a quarter, but then getting closer to this edge, we probably got a quarter of a slope. So I'm kind of trying to eliminate some of this um, because it's just going to compound by layer. But at the same time, each layer that I put in, I'm going to try to kind of work its way out. Like if I'm a quarter here, I'm going to try to put the next layer a little bit more level, like an eighth out type of deal. You know, it's hard. Anyways, long story short, working with stone, you're always going to have this fucking problem. Uh, this is nothing new and realistically you just kind of got to work with what you got so try to grind out some of it you're not going to grind out all of it but that's what we're going to do so i grinded it out and it's time for the next layer this layer the next layer that's going on here is going to mimic this layer so all these stones are going to be sideways so we're essentially going to be going like this that's a bad stone but uh let me get a good stone. I like this stone better. We're going identical with this one. This one's got no cut. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven this way. And then what do we got this way? One, two, three, four. Four this way and then another seven that way. That's what I'm doing right now. Let's get at it. So what this layer is now is it's still sitting pretty much centered on this layer. So I'm not over cantilevering if you're worried about cantilevering, this layer is pretty solid because it's still centered on this layer all the way around. And I could already see some ups and downs that I'm gonna have to kind of figure out how to work out, but let's keep going. Next layer. All right, I know there's gonna be a lot of shit talk in the comments. Um, I was actually gonna switch it up and on these top layers, uh, because I'm starting to kind of cantilever potentially, um, I was gonna use some high heat, um, potentially mortar or some sort of other adhesive that's got better temperature qualities than this. Uh, PL Premium, Premium, it's rated for 250 uh, Fahrenheit or roughly 120 Celsius, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that is not very good for fires. However, I'm just gonna keep pointing it out or I'm gonna, you know what, let's do this, fuck it. I'm gonna do this and uh, I'm gonna do Subscribe to my channel and uh, let's say a year from now I'm gonna come back and do another video after multiple fires to see how well this stuff held up. I'm still kind of on the premise of is it gonna is the heat actually gonna penetrate through some of this stone? You know what I mean? Um, I, I really don't feel like it will unless I'm trying to like you know fucking do blacksmithing in here or some shit. 
I feel like the heat won't reach that high. So let's do that. Subscribe to my channel. A year from now, I'm gonna come back to a, another video of uh, this PL Premium to see how well it held up with this fireplace. I mean, this shit's solid right now, um, but let's see what happens after some heat. So I'm gonna lay my next uh, layer here and let's go. So in this case, I'm aiming for around four inches. Four inches. And it should get me all the way around. Back this one up. I can move around a little bit, but essentially I'm trying to be flush. I think I'm trying to be flush. Pretty much flush with the edge of this. So that's kind of where I'm going. All right, layers in, aiming for like four inches all the way around. All right, next layer. Skating like Mario fucking Lemieux on that. surface all right this layer is officially in and it's glued adhered to I was actually standing on it um, yesterday but anyways uh, I'm gonna make one point in this little section of the clip uh, I want to give you an idea of where the actual angle iron physically sits and where the center of gravity sits right now uh, because we're kind of, it looks like we're pyramiding in, right? And so the scare is that shit's going to start falling in uh, over time if the adhesive um, melts away or burns away or whatever, right? Right now, as we stand, I'm going to use this brick as an example. This whole row, the angle iron is roughly here. So if I draw a line up here, I'm actually not even overhanging on the scenario yet. So this is roughly where the center of gravity is of the angle iron underneath all of this. So this is still on this side, which has all the support. I'll show you that on the inside here. Let's fucking dive into this fucking playground here. Ugh. So from the inside, it's funny. On the outside, it looks like we're pyramiding, but on the inside, we actually have a flat wall here. This, this, is completely centered on this angle iron right here right so this is all sitting on the angle iron so we're not kind of we're not visually it looks like we're kind of coming in but realistically we're not so I'm gonna put one more layer on top of this and that's gonna be the only layer that's actually kind of overhanging the the whole uh, angle iron aspect of this but generally speaking that's the last layer uh, nothing's going on on top of that and uh, let's get at it. I'm gonna shave off some of these uh, high points and try to make sure my top layer is as flush as can be. Let's get at it. All right, last layer is in. This is the top and I'm gonna do the finishing touches after this layer, but I'm gonna give you a pro tip of what I've learned throughout this process. I was super fucking anal when it came to leveling the bottom. That's great and all. The problem is these stones are not all the same thickness. And that is where everything kind of slowly starts to get thrown off, right? So as I was doing the top, I was kind of trying to figure out ways to kind of balance out the stones. So I was literally taking stones that were higher and throwing them to the side and taking stones that were the same level. Long story short, you end up with a little bit of, over time, a uh, little bit of unevenness, but what I was doing during that time was, I was cutting, I was cutting little like eighth of an inch, I was trying to get an eighth of an inch uh, off of uh, slivers of stone, and then throughout um, the, the, the top layer I did a lot of, of trying to kind of balance it out, and I would 
put it underneath, put some glue down and then hammer it down and it would crush it. And that crushing would kind of essentially become a leveling uh, sand of sorts, right? So that's what I was doing with these little like chunks here and there. Um, I would recommend, I tried to do it essentially, I started, I didn't do it on this layer, but I started doing it on this layer and then I kind of finished it off on this layer. And realistically, I should have kind of, kind of manipulated it throughout but i mean at the end of the day this looks really good you can't tell if you try to get close to an eighth you really can't tell from a visual that you're actually shimming stuff up because the stone is all screwed up to begin with right so if you're shimming stuff you won't even be able to tell but try to keep it to an eighth and kind of manipulate it all the way up and then at the very top i'm i'm pretty pretty satisfied with the levelness that came out of this right so that's just a little pro tip What's next? I gotta finish up the bottom. I'm gonna go buy some uh, polymeric sand and I'm gonna fill these cracks and I'm gonna buy about six bags of gravel and fill this center with gravel to raise the fire to like a nice viewing distance. So that's the next step right now. Let's get it going. I got eight bags of crushed gravel, AKA drain field rock from Lowe's and it's going inside there to get this thing up. As, as it stands right now, we're at 16 inches deep, which is a little bit way too deep for the fire. So I'm gonna put eight bags in. Hopefully eight bags is enough. Hopefully I don't have to go buy more. So let's throw that in here and see where we're at. Eight bags are in. And man, did I fucking not thumb that one correctly. It barely put a dent in. Literally all it did was cover two inches. I was expecting it to cover at least like eight inches and eight bags did not cover it. Therefore I had to go back and buy another 12 bags. I got a total of 20 bags, and I'm not gonna lie, the, I should have read the bag, but it says a half a cubic foot. Literally, there's like 13 and a half fucking rocks in there. I feel like I'm paying for the plastic more so than the goddamn, I'm at $80 worth of this fucking shit. I should have went to a yard and got like a full yard for probably 30 bucks. Anyways, 20 bags total going in. Let's get at it. All right. 20 bags are in, and I feel like I'm at a very comfortable level of height. There's one side of me that wants to go a little bit higher, but then the other side says, nah, we can live with this. Where am I at here? We're at, I don't know, roughly eight or seven inches, seven inches from the top. So I can put my wood in here and it'll give me a nice view of this and probably fry up a lizard for lunch. Or something but yeah all right let's go to the next step what is the next step polymeric sand so what is polymeric sand if you don't know what polymeric sand is i'm not going to explain it in this video but i do plan on doing another video that's going to explain explain this a little bit better but basically it is a filler or a joint sand but it also has an adhesive into it so what you do is you pour it in like a sand so i'm going to be doing these cracks right here pouring it all the way in here so they don't go loose like that all the way around and then I'm gonna sprinkle it with water and it's gonna turn into like a, a sandy glue and it's gonna look nice and it's gonna the best part about it and this is why I'm gonna make another video so if you're gonna if you don't know what polymeric sand is subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna make a video later on dealing with my weed problem between the cracks polymeric sand does a very good job at getting rid of all these weeds and preventing them from growing. But I'm not doing that in this video, subscribe to my channel. Or if you're watching this video, that video might be already up. So just click on my channel and try to find it. So anyways, let's get at it. Start throwing some sand down. Let's do this. I got my uh, party cup here. If you can't tell, I like to party, eh? Party. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try this. I think this will be the easiest way rather than trying to pour it out of the bag. But I'm gonna start drizzling it into the cracks here just to get it at a nice level. Get a nice level. And I'm gonna use my wife's broom, which if she sees this, she's probably gonna fucking lose her mind. Oops. And I'm gonna start brushing it in like this. Getting it in and smoothening this edge out. There we go, look at that, look nice and flush. And I'm gonna pour more in.
and I'm gonna work my way around. Okay, sand is in. Uh, pro tip with sand, try not to leave any sand left over sitting on the actual uh, patio because what's gonna happen is if you have uh, like a, let's say a clump of sand here, once you start wet watering it, uh, it's gonna turn into like an adhesive and it's gonna stick to this and then it's just gonna be a pain in the ass to try to like scrub off. So uh, the other thing is, I don't know, I didn't do a mound. Some people I feel like like to do a mound up. I'm not a fan of that. I feel like it doesn't look good. So I'm kind of flush all the way around. So that's that. Let's get started on the watering. Now, when you're watering polymeric sand, you're not trying to drench it or wash it away. All you're trying to do is get it wet. So I got it on the shower mode on my shitty ass sprinkler here. And I'm literally just gonna like fucking painting a car spray with the polymeric all the way around. I'm not trying to drench it or wash it away. And you will see foam which is good because that's kind of the adhesive coming out. So don't let it wash away on you. Nice and wet. And that should work its way through. I'll let it sit a little. It's working its way through all the way down and it's gonna trigger the adhesive. All right, all right, all right. So bitch is done. Now it's time to figure out how much this thing costs me. And I'm just gonna climb up on this motherfucker here. Let's have a beer up here and celebrate our victory of sorts. Oh, look at that. I'm wa fucking walking on fucking eggshells here. All right. So first of all, I actually did look into uh, buying a fireplace uh, instead of this thing. And uh, once I started looking at fireplaces, the reality was uh, they were like five grand, roughly minimum. And then you gotta get delivery and install and stuff like that, right? So that's why I ended up going with this route. You see down there. And uh, so big question, what did it cost? What, so what did it cost me? So I did the math here, let's go through it right now. Uh, there was roughly 117 stones used to uh, build this thing. Um, I'm saying roughly because there were some cuts in here and there and then you know, I don't know if it might have been 120 might have been 115 so I'm kind of roughly at 117 stones the stones cost per stone was two dollars and ninety five cents Which made the total roughly three hundred and forty five dollars worth of stone Okay, next I had some steel involved um, for the uh, angle iron I purchased that in lengths. You can purchase that cut at some of the uh, the places that sell this stuff, right? Um, so depending on how you buy it, I purchased it in lengths. I have a good buddy of mine that's got a shop and he was able to cut it for me. Thanks, Bob, if you're watching this. Um, but long story short, the steel, the angle iron that I used was a total of $150. Um, then what else did I use? Uh, I used glue or adhesive or PL Premium. Uh, that was roughly, I bought a pack of $40 worth, but I'm gonna be doing a more projects back there. So actually subscribe if you wanna see more stuff out of stone. But um, that was roughly $20 worth of adhesive. Um, and then uh, polymeric sand, which was used around the edge. Um, that was $20 per bag. I literally barely used any of a bag. So that's just 20 bucks. It is what it is. Uh, the My biggest, it, piss off to be honest with you was with that with that uh, gravel uh, the crushed gravel I ended up spending $80 worth of crushed gravel that was 20 bags and it blows my mind how little there is in a bag and I 80 bucks seems crazy if you go to like a stone yard you'll be able to get way more gravel and way more bang for the buck so um, so that's that yeah so as far as materials go um, that totals to around six hundred and fifteen dollars to build this this fireplace um that's as far as materials go now i do have some tools as well and that's debatable whether you need them or not right so 
I did buy this saw. Literally, I bought this saw for my backyard project. This I bought at Lowe's, and I'm going to be doing a review on that. So if you're interested in that saw, uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, I'll probably be doing a review on the next project, which is going to be over there. But that saw was $200. And then I had this uh, angle grinder. I've had this piece of shit for years. It is a totally cheap, cheap, cheap thing. But it's got a good uh, diamond blade on it. And I had to use it a little bit in some places, but mainly that was the main weapon of choice in this case. Uh, that's probably, I don't know, you could probably pick one of those up for like 30 bucks. Um, so yeah, so 615 for the materials, plus another 250 if you don't have your um, devices to cut with. And uh, yeah, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with this turnout. Um, it's got this, again, this hybrid of fire pit slash fireplace and uh, i like it i like the look of it a lot tell me what you think did i waste my money i don't think i did i don't know whatever 850 into this thing that's nothing i swear to god if you try to get a fireplace um which gives you this beautiful look you're gonna certainly pay way more than that so way more way 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 more and i'm talking like again five grand anyways that's that subscribe to my channel i got more shit to come and uh let's go have a fucking beer cheers